evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the world of V-Gaming Junkie News! All the dross was thrown out of this manor, I suppose, so there's nothing but pure gaming-related meatiness. It's all about the electronic good stuff as we dive deep in all that's new in the various interactive virtual worlds. Starting out with Valve lost the controller patent lawsuit I mentioned last week. You heard right, it was apparently four years ago since the complaint was filed and $4 million was recently awarded to SCUF. Salting the wound, SCUF's lawyer Robert Becker claimed Valve was aware of the unacceptable risk of infringement and even compared it to David vs. Goliath. As I mentioned last week, it seems things just aren't going well for Valve nowadays. It seems Valve isn't the only one facing legal woes as Activision is being sued over a Call of Duty character named Mara whom Kate Janus alleges is based on his own work. Kate is a photographer and alleges that Activision purposefully used photographs he took of Alex Zedra to model Mara and that NDAs were even involved to keep quiet about it. He even alleges that the model and makeup artist used for the original shoot were hired for that purpose. However, unlike the lawsuit against Valve, it's unlikely that this lawsuit will bear any teeth. Still, it's news related to video gaming and it's vaguely interesting, I'd argue. So in other news, Google Stadia is shutting down a studio. No, the service itself isn't dead quite yet, although I seriously doubt it'll have a long, prosperous life given Google's dead projects and previous failed game streaming attempts, but their first party development is being shut down. This means that any plans Google had to develop their own games for the service is being cancelled and will be relying wholly on third parties. Let's be real, as much as I hate to admit this, since some games like Bloodborne I'd really like to be able to play, exclusives are what make or break game systems, and while this is technically a service, the same easily applies here. Personally, I think we need to acknowledge that game streaming is hugely impractical anyway due to the fact that games require inputs. This isn't like movie or music streaming, you can't passively wait for the data to finish transferring and not everybody has a super internet either. I actually had an idea of a hybrid type system where the main mechanics are local and simply the visuals on top of it are streamed in, but I doubt even that would work. For now, you'll just have to keep using local hardware if you want a truly good gaming experience. And now for some lighthearted stories, starting with the game Sea of Thieves. Rare developed a real-life treasure hunt based on the game All for Auto, a six-year-old who's a big fan of the game and has developed Cabin Fever. For those of you who don't know, Cabin Fever is a type of claustrophobia brought about by being confined for lengthy periods and brings about irritability or restlessness. This was of course brought about by the pandemic, which hasn't exactly encouraged social behavior nowadays. The directions in question led Otto and his father to a Sea of Thieves tote bag filled with various things like a mug, beanie, copy of the game, Xbox controller, and a letter signed by the devs of the game. I'm reminded of the rare celebrities that visit sick children in hospitals dressed as the beloved characters they play as. It's really nice to see people in a position of power actually using their influence for good rather than just self-indulgence of telling people what politics to follow. So here's some interesting information regarding GoldenEye 64. As some of you may or may not be aware, there was a planned Xbox remastering, but the game's a tangled mess of copyright. Rare developed the game under Nintendo when they owned the James Bond license. Since then, Rare was bought by Microsoft, and the James Bond license fell to EA and then Activision. That means that Activision, Rare, Microsoft, and probably Nintendo would all have to agree to it, and not to mention Pierce Brosnan because of his likeness. What do you think the GoldenEye that appeared for Wii and later PS3 and 360 was a reimagining with Daniel Craig? Anyway, this remastering was actually essentially completed and it was leaked online. That's right, you can apparently play the whole thing for yourself as it would have been had it been allowed to be released. From what I can tell, it has the Monkey Island thing where you can toggle between the newer and older graphics at your leisure and I'll definitely be checking it out in the near future. So one seriously mad lad named Otto Kleiman went and modded a Game Boy Color to work with an Apple TV. That's right, he basically modded his Game Boy Color to work as a remote for the Apple TV. In addition to modding his system to have a backlight and just look more like an Apple product, he's utilizing the infrared that the system already has to beam commands to the TV. Of course, it has a game cartridge specifically meant for the infrared commands associated with an Apple TV, but honestly, that sounds like some official products that have actually been released. The web browser for the original DS, complete with memory expansion GBA cartridge, comes to mind. It is very interesting to see people breathe new life into an old system. Heck, I saw someone successfully port Wolfenstein 3D to the system using a chip in the cartridge akin to the Super Nintendo Super FX chip. And speaking of the Super Nintendo, you audiophiles out there might really get a kick out of this next news story. There's a very interesting effort called the Super Mario Restored Project that aims to take all the soundtracks of Super Mario World and completely restore them to full quality. As nice as the Super Nintendo sound chip was, it wasn't perfect and left things fairly compressed to fit on a cartridge. 
Hearing the restored music, you can really tell the difference, even with just speakers, so I imagine audio aficionados will experience the ultimate pleasure out of hearing it with good quality headphones. It's an ongoing process, of course, but multiple tracks have been already converted for your hearing pleasure, and I applaud the people working on it. Wrapping things up for the headlines, a fan of Metal Gear Solid is attempting to remake at least some of the third one and the engine of the fifth one. As someone who recently played through the third one and enjoyed it immensely, I would love to have the chance to play it with some more modern graphics and a smoother engine. Or, you know, at least play without all the nasty pitfalls of emulation. The cutscenes were sadly not done justice by all the glitchiness. Why Konami hasn't put MGS3 on PC yet is anyone's guess, but at least it looks like it'll be a very interesting way to experience chunks of it if you've got Metal Gear Solid V for PC. With Konami being Konami, this might be the only form of it we'll see outside of rigged pachinko machines, which is a real shame because the artists who worked on that one did a really good job. And as always, from Games Radar's own page, it's time for the next week's round of release dates. Not very many releases, mind you, but there's a few of them. On the 11th, Death Crown releases for PC, Xbox One, and Switch, and Little Nightmares 2 releases for the old band of four. On the 12th, Gal Gun Returns releases for PC, both Xboxes, and Switch, and Rover Wars releases for Xbox One. Finally, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury releases on the Switch, also on the 12th. This week's epic freebie until next Thursday is For the King, a hybrid turn-based strategy and roguelike game. Wait a second, what's this? Could it be a second freebie this week? That's right, it's Metro Last Light Redux. Sweep it up if you're at all interested. And as always, that rounds out this news week. I hope you enjoyed it and were well enough informed. Let's Plays are every day at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Live streams are Mondays and Fridays unless I specify on the community tab at 4.30 p.m. And these news programs are Sundays at 6 p.m. All Eastern Standard Time. What's that you say? You don't want to have to deal with time zones? Well, that's all right. You can always just subscribe and poise upward slash that bell icon if you want to keep notified. The like is always appreciated for the algorithms, but I just hope you genuinely liked it. And that is it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Spread this video around like the phase on spreading through my veins. And I'll see you next time. Make sure you go out there and capitalize on life and peace out. Have a good one. I'll see you next week.